Hello, this is Don Milne again, founder and director of Stories Behind the Stars, and this is part two of writing your first World War II fallen story. If you remember from the first video, we start off by telling everyone that this is our mission. We're telling the stories of all 421,000 Americans who died in World War II, and we want to give each star a story. In order for people to be better prepared to do this, we've created some training material, which we call Star Corps Boot Camp, where we train volunteers to write stories. We have two versions of the boot camps. I'm going to show you how they compare. One is Together We Serve, the other is Fold 3. Here are the boot camp table of contents side by side. I will provide a link to both of these in this YouTube video so you can go to the one that you're interested in signing up for. Notice it says buy now. It doesn't cost anything. It's just the platform that we use to do this training material. Oftentimes it's used by influencers and they sell products, but we just use it as a platform for training and we do it for free, so you're not gonna buy anything. But if you wanna look at the two versions, here on the left is the Fold 3 version of our boot camp, and here on the right is the uh, Together We Serve version of our boot camp. So if you look from the introduction, you can see we've got the introduction already has six lessons in it for Together We Serve, only two lessons for Fold 3. We talk a little about the stories behind the STARS organization in both of them. The mission is going to look the same. The uh, overview, pretty similar. Um, finding names. Um, here you can see there's a few more lessons on the uh, Together We Serve side. Where are you going to find the material? Um, those are pretty much the same. What should you include in the story? That's going to be the same regardless of which version you go through. How to write a story. That looks pretty much the same. Saving the story, the instructions are going to be different whether you save it to Fold 3 or Together We Serve. And then information on doing a quality review. Um, a couple more steps on the uh, Together We Serve side. We have information on how to access the VPN, which is used for some of the uh, resource material online. We have information about the Facebook group is the same. And then we have our conclusion. And then... A few extra credit things related to uh, the project. And here you can see at the end of the Together We Serve Bootcamp, you can see an additional 11 lessons that were created by our partners at Together We Serve to help you learn more details on how to navigate and use Together We Served. You don't have to do that with the uh, Fold 3. So as you can kind of tell just from looking at the table of contents, it's simpler to use Fold 3. You'll get into using it quicker. But if you're familiar with Together We Served, or if you think that you're really adept at adapting to a platform like this, because it does have a lot of features that are explained in this first section that would want to, over time, have people choose this, um, that would be great. But what I'm gonna recommend for 95% of the people that are watching this, Save your first story on Fold 3, and if you end up doing maybe multiple stories a week, which some people do, instead of just like what we expect or hope most people can do just one story a week, maybe you will, you will want to switch over and learn how to use Together We Serve. Um, once you learn how to use it, some of the more frustrating things of heavy users of Fold 3 go away because you're saving things on Together We Served. And probably should have mentioned this earlier, but the reason we can use either platform um, is everything that's saved on Together We Served, because an, an agreement Together We Served has with Fold 3, it gets automatically transferred to Fold 3. It doesn't work the other way around, but either platform would be acceptable to use. So we're gonna talk about the first story assignment. We're gonna get an experienced writer that's gonna write one of the stories, and then we're gonna have all our other writers New writers each take one of these other crewmen and write his story. As I briefly showed you in the uh, part one video, you're going to review the crewmate's story. You're going to do the research. You're going to do the writing. You're going to do the remembrance. That's my R way of saying you're going to save the story. Save it to Fold 3, or maybe 5% of you are going to save it to Together We Served. And then we want you to do a review. So the first thing you want to do if you're going to participate in doing this as your first story, you need to join a bomber crew. Well, how do you do that? You just need to email me at don at stories behind the stars 
And then I will match you up with a director who is managing a project. Maybe it's Arlington, maybe it's a state project, and they will have had uh, an experienced writer write one of the stories from that bomber crew. And then they'll give you a name of one of the other crewmates. That'll be the name that you will write about. One way I think that really helps us to learn how to write stories is use examples of other people that have already written stories. And what better way than to read the story of someone who was on that same plane, because a lot of the information that you need, that person's already found. And we're not asking you to copy and paste it completely, but your information is going to be very, very similar. And in some cases, it does make sense because if you're quoting from the same sources, you might as well include the same information. So here's a photo shot of a story that was written by one of our experienced writers, Dennis Dupras. And I'm going to show it to you in a little more details to show you what he put together. So here I am on Fold 3. This is where he saved it to. And you can see he's put his title right here so they, we know who that was. He was a captain in the Air Force. And then this is the body of the story of what he wrote. The first part's kind of background information about his family. And then he's going to talk about enlisting in the Air Force. And he's talking about pilot training and a little bit about the bomber group he was in and what they did. And then talking about his individual experiences as a combat pilot. And then he's going to talk a little bit about his final mission. And in fact, he was able to, and you won't be able to do this for, for all of the, the stories you write about, but sometimes you can find what's called a missing air crew report. And he actually just included that in the body of the story. So it looks like, wow, I'm, I'm writing a lot. Well, this part here was just a cut and paste thing to include information that was put together within a few days of when his mission went down. Then he's got a few more paragraphs to sum things up. He's got this author's note that is post-mission about something related to uh, the family. And then we always have this standard paragraph at the bottom that kind of indicates this is a this is a group volunteer project so that when people read it and they say, wow, this is super cool, maybe I'd like to do it, they know how to uh, join our project. And then here at the bottom, very important, we include sources. Um, we want to include information so people can find where we had details. And it's the, the degree to which you put sources, that's kind of up to you. Um, this is pretty extensive, but we're showing you the one extreme because that's probably the most helpful. Um, if you want to do it more newspaper style and have it with less exact locations, but just give more general sources of where you found information, that's acceptable too. So that's a great example for your first story because a lot of the details are going to be the same, the story that you're going to write about. Just because you're writing another story from the same plane doesn't mean it has to be cookie cutter and you have to follow the exact sentence by sentence format that Dennis did and that you're just changing dates and names. Um, this is like doing a floral arrangements in some way. Everybody does a little bit different. There isn't a right way to do things. Your style might be different than Dennis's and he may be putting more details than you would necessarily feel you needed to put in. Remember, we do have a target of we want to keep it within 500 to 1,000 words most of the time because your audience, for the most part, is reading this on a cell phone and they can't be reading a 20,000 word story on a cell phone. It's just not the best way to do that. So keep that in mind. Another thing you can do is you can go to uh, Stories Behind the Stars by doing a search on Fold3. And when you type that in, it'll show up here as a content provider. If you click that, you'll see uh, the names of people that have been written about for our project. So this guy's a flyer. If you want to maybe read how someone else did a story about someone who was a flyer, you click on that. So we have about 16,000, 16,082 today, examples of how different people have written these stories. So don't feel like you need to be boxed in and you read a story and say, uh, I don't know if I can quite do what Dennis does. Uh, Dennis has been doing this a long time, so this is a really good example to show where people can get to eventually. But if you want to look at a few other stories to kind of different feel like, well, man, Dennis has got like this 
massive floral arrangements and I, I think I can just do like a dozen roses as an example. Yeah, by all means, don't feel obligated to think that the sample you're given, and some of you may get a Bomber Crew story that was written by Dennis, but we're going to have many, many experienced volunteers that do stories. So use that as a main guide, but if you feel you want to kind of nose around some of the other stories, as you can see, there's 16,000 to choose from. Okay, so you've learned about how you can review to learn and copy techniques. The next thing you want to do is you want to use online resources for research. And you're going to want to use a tip sheet that's part of the boot camp, both versions. This is what the tip sheet looks like. It's just a, a spreadsheet in uh, Google or Excel. And it's also provided as a PDF file. So a lot of people like to print it out so they can have it right by their computer as they're going through the different points of information that they're looking for. And we've made this pretty easy as far as primary information and occasional information, almost all our stories will want to include this information, date of birth, location, who their father was by name, mother by name, what their father's occupation was, how many older and younger siblings they had, um, how many years they went to school, their pre-war occupation, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of different information that we know you can include in the story, and we're going to tell you where to find that. So here's the primary source. This would be the first place you would look for this information. So date of birth, look at ancestry, family search, or my heritage. Um, if you're looking for the occupation of the father, look for census records. We always add some comments if it's something extra you need to have. So this tip sheet, this checklist, super, super helpful at helping you include everything you want to include in your first story. And that's you're going to be able to find the link to that in the boot camp. I want to mention a little about these particular three sites. You may already have a membership to Ancestry or Newspapers or Fold3. If you don't, um, in the boot camp you'll find instructions on how to get access for free. Now, as of this recording, we're using a VPN. We're hoping to transition away from that, but you will need to get the instructions and get your password for a VPN specifically for you. And once you've got that VPN, you're actually joining the institution version of these products. It's not the individual version. And so it's kind of like going to a library to use a library version. It doesn't have quite the same um, exact benefits that you would get if you owned it yourself or were a subscriber yourself. But it's adequate for what we need to use. So if you don't have access to those, um, if you're super excited and jump right in, you start using that information on your own, you're going to say, oh, it wants me to join. It wants me to pay. Well, yeah, you can do that, but you don't have to. But you do have to use our boot camp material to learn how to uh, get your uh, free access. Now, once you've done all the research and you're putting this all together in a story, we recommend that you use whichever platform you're more comfortable with already. So whether that's Word or Google Docs, um, if you're a Mac user, maybe use Pages. If there's even some other platform that you use, maybe it's even pen and paper. And there at the bottom, I'm saying use the full three boot camp. There is additional information on how, how to write the stories that you will find there. Step four is remembrance. We're recommending that you save it on the Fold3 platform. Refer to the Fold3 boot camp to go to the step-by-step -step process to make that happen. Number five is the review process. We always recommend doing a, a self-review. You write something. I think what works best for me is I write it. And then I maybe step away from it for a little bit with a fresh set of eyes. I can go back and sometimes catch things I miss. This is like typos or extra periods or things that just don't look quite right. And sometimes it's just a formatting thing. When when you do it maybe in Word and you copy it over to full three, maybe you meant to have a paragraph break and didn't show up. So you want to go back and do kind of a self-review. If you have a friend that can read it, that kind of give you a, a, uh, some tips on what about this, or did you forget to use that, or hey, this is an incomplete sentence. It's super helpful to do that. And the last thing we want you to do, and this only is for the very first story this time, um, I wish we had more resources to make this possible for any story someone wrote, but for your very first story, if you send the URL to that Fold3 page to Linda Simpson at that email address, she's going to assign it to some volunteers who have volunteered to take some time and just go over 
your first story and give you some best practices tips so you can say, oh yeah, I, I didn't know about that. I should do that. And just make sure that for, for your first story, get your uh, feet on the ground and you come up with a story that you hopefully will feel is acceptable and useful and something that anybody coming to visit that memorial or gravesite would be able to read that and say, wow, this was a nice story. I'm so glad I wrote it. I'm so glad I took the time to read it. So that's step number five. So those are the five steps to do your first story. What's going to happen, and it's already possible because of our partners with Find a Grave and with Together We Serve, is people are going to be able to go to any cemetery or memorial, put in that person's name, and read the story that you wrote. Our volunteers are another great resource. I'm not sure if you'll be using this as much for your first story. You're welcome to, but obviously for beyond your first story, they're a great resource. If you join our Star Course Facebook group, we have uh, getting close to 600 people that are on there. You can ask questions um, and, and you'll oftentimes within an hour, you'll get an answer back. So great resource. Our volunteers come from all backgrounds, all ages, all 50 states, about a dozen other countries. So if you're looking for something particular, you may be able to link up with someone that might be able to have something more geographic that you can help with. But uh, they are a great resource for helping you with your stories. Another thing you can use is our free YouTube training videos. Some of our boot camp lessons will refer to a YouTube video, but it's also if you want to just browse through these videos, you may find information that you can find useful without having to go through the boot camp. And sometimes your stuff that's not exactly tied into boot camp. And we have, I would probably go to the playlist tab, and then you can find by category some of the different types of videos that are available. So use that as another resource to help you with writing your stories. Now that you've written your first story, where can we use your help? A couple of projects. We have Arlington National Cemetery, which we'll probably be working on through the 4th of July and maybe a little bit later for a few of the names. If we get enough help, we can get them all done by the 4th of July. We've been looking for about 300 people to do this, doing one story a week. If they can do more, that'd be great. And if you're really enjoying this, we always say, hey, please invite other people that you know that you think might want to help us out so that we can get all 8,000 names completed this summer. The other current project that we're working with is with the state database. So your first story maybe will be from a state director or um, if you're interested and in, you live in one of these states or have affinity with one of these states, you may want to uh, contact our state directors and say, Hey, I live in New Jersey. I'd love to do the uh, fallen from my county. So that's another avenue you can take to uh, contribute additional stories past your first one. Wrapping up here, every fallen deserves a story. And with your help, we're going to make that happen. Now, once you've done your first story, continue on with Fold 3 for a while. If you're super comfortable with that, and maybe you're saying, I wish it had a little more features that I'm noticing I don't, I'm not able to do. Maybe check out the other boot camp with Together We Served and go through that and say, wow, this has a lot of cool bells and whistles. Maybe I'll put the, the time I need, you know, five or six hours I need to go through these to really see how that works. And I'll do it on that instead. Either ones will work great. Uh, and we uh, encourage you to pick whichever one you think will be more enjoyable for you. Thanks to all the supporters that have made this possible. And thank you for listening to part two of this video.